Without a shadow of a doubt, these were the worst built clubs that I've ever purchased. And if it wasn't for me rebuilding them myself, I wouldn't have actually known what was going on underneath. Let's have a look. Guys, how you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. Simon here. P770 irons. I made a video probably about four weeks ago, maybe five weeks ago. We haven't been making many videos recently, but determined to up that this month. These irons I bought damaged. I knew I was getting a good deal because they were £210 for four to pitch and wedge P770. And I put in a low offer. I think he was advertising for about 250 which is quite reasonable for P770 anyway. And I went at 210 and he snapped it and I bought them and I was a bit skeptical why I got those so easily and this set was a minefield. I said in that video I was going to rebuild them, regrip grip them, re-glue them, new ferrules so that these things are now in very good condition. But I want to show you what they were, how I built them, fixed them and I did this all at home in my kitchen. So you don't really need a massive amount of tools. Um, for some of you I wouldn't really recommend building your clubs if this is your first time and you've only got one set of clubs. But if you want to play about, this is basically the techniques I use so you guys can then go and do this yourself. Before we get into the video, thank you to everyone that took the leap and subscribed to my Payam account. I do appreciate it. I'll start uploading content on there now. I've actually put these on there for 200 pounds um, uh, and then posted to anywhere in the UK as kind of like a support. I think I might give those people like the first dibs on some sets that I get. Obviously I bought these for 210 but there's one club missing and we'll get into that in a minute. So thank you to all those guys and to be honest, thank you guys just for watching these videos, subscribing and liking them. Let's do it. First things first, just general appearance. This is what the clubs looked like at the start of this process. There was rust inside the heads, there's rust on the face, which to be honest, I only cleaned up, I didn't really get rid of. The ferrules were dented, damaged, which to be honest, isn't necessarily a massive issue because ferrules are just there as cosmetics, just basically blend the shaft to the head. But as bad as they were, I knew the person that put those heads with those ferrules on probably didn't know what was going in underneath and I was completely correct. Grips were worn. Not only this, this is the worst thing that I realised and it kind of opened my eyes. I do check all my clubs, mainly for them being real rather than um, uh, the quality of the build, potentially what people might have done for them. So it's something that I've learned and something that I'm definitely going to take into consideration a lot more when I'm buying clubs and then obviously moving them on because it's my name and reputation um, on the end. So I want to make sure that everything that passes through my hands is top notch. The length of the clubs was the biggest one here. You'll see a photo or video, I should say. The pitch and wedge 9 iron, 8 iron were all the same length, which again, massive red flag. The grips were tatted and worn, which is okay, to be honest, but I mean, it didn't add anything to the overall look of the clubs, especially as these are high-end quality clubs. On eBay, I'd look to sell these, and obviously if these don't go on my payment account, I'd sell them for 350 on eBay, and I think someone in the summer would definitely take them up. They've got 6.5 Project X shafts in it, They've got brand new grips, which I've redone. The heads are in good-ish shape now. Obviously, you can see some wear marks, but they've got a lot of life left in them. Okay, disclaimer, this process is for steel shafts only. Do not try any of this with graphite shafts, and I'll explain why as we go through. Hope blade's gonna save you a lot of time. The normal Stanley blade, you can do it. Again, steel, you can't scratch with the Stanley blade, so don't necessarily worry on that part, but it saves you a lot of time. Hope blade, top tip. Then we're going to take the heads off. I use a heat gun. You can get this, and you guys probably got heat guns anyway um, in your garage, and you can get one from Home Base. I bought mine, I think, when I first became self employed for about £25. And I took all these heads off. Now, you can see me just twisting the heads off with a bit of heat applied to them. Again, steel, not a problem. Graphite, do not do it. You need the tools and shaft extractors because if you twist graphite, especially at heat, you're gonna destroy the shaft itself. So it's really important. Again, graphite, stay away from club building. You need a full workshop. This can be done in terms of steel. And because these clubs aren't old, I knew that there wasn't gonna be much rust. There wasn't gonna be much 
damaged and they come off quite easy. So we used the kitchen mitt and a bit of heat, all the heads came off and this is the first thing that I saw. The heads were all in different positions as they were put in, which didn't surprise me because the ferals were in pretty dam uh, damaged shape. Therefore, the person was probably panicking when re-gluing them. They were all at different lengths. Some were in fully into the hosel, some weren't. And again, it does open my eyes. I probably move a lot of clubs on and I don't know who's built them. Normally, I just expect them to be come from the manufacturer. If you see, and Project X is kind of common with a P770, but if you see an out there shaft in somewhat of an oldish head or newish head, do question it, has it been built properly? So we took all the heads off and you can see the state of what these shafts were in. I basically stripped the shafts all down to the bare metal, cleaned them, polished them, uh, get them as pretty much brand new so that I have a pretty strong bond, not only on the grip end, so the grips are gonna be flat, but also at the bottom end as well, so that when they go back into the heads, not only they go going fully, they're gonna have a good um, grip and good bond to the head, so I know that those heads won't be coming off unless obviously um, someone wants to take them out for whatever reason. So obviously length was an issue on the pitching wedge and the nine iron and the eight iron. Uh, the next thing, and there's quite a few things that were wrong with this set, the six iron didn't have a swing weight in the bottom of the head. All the other heads have swing weights in them. And again, I wouldn't have known. And to be honest, if all the ferrules were good, I would have probably just moved these clubs on anyway. And when I got my workshop and simulators and everything going into 2021 set up and I've got a proper workshop, I can go through this whole process. The idea is to be state-of-the-art club fitter, but with second-hand clubs. And I can swing weight stuff. I'm not an expert with swing weighting and I'm definitely not an expert club builder by any stretch. This is basically how to build clubs at home. But I want to be and I want the technology and being able to swing weight second hand clubs and making sure that they're in good condition and the grips and the heads, you name it. That's where I want to be. But if the ferals weren't in bad condition, I would have never known and God knows how many sets I've moved on that have a lot of stuff under the hood. Sadly, the six iron swing weight is missing. I don't know why or what's gone on with that. All the other ones have got their swing weights in them. I can't get a replacement. It's not gonna affect the grip or the bond, but it will affect the swing weight. And it's something when I come to sell on eBay or I've posted on my payment account, I've made aware that the six iron is gonna be out and it's gonna feel definitely lighter overall, especially in the head ends compared to the other ones. These are 0.350 ferrules. You can't put them on unless you heat them up and put the head on. And that's the only way you know that you're gonna have a pretty strong bond between the ferrule and the ferrule not sliding up the shaft. Obviously these are tapered shafts. Therefore, it's highly unlikely that ferrule is ever gonna move now with the heads on. But I use it as a measure and potentially this is where the other person went wrong. Putting the ferrule on, putting the glue on and then trying to get it all the way up there. If you get stuck and that glue starts setting, you're in a real bit of a pickle. I understand with parallel shafts, putting a bit of glue, putting that ferrule on, it's just the way I've done it always. And I don't think that these ferrules are ever gonna move anyway. But I do it just to make sure also that all the ferrules, or I make sure that all the hosels are going straight into the bottom of the head and you're not leaving yourself a gap at the bottom so that all the lengths of shafts are out of kilter as well. So I normally measure up, heat up those ferrules. They will move quite easily with a bit of heat. And then we're going to arrow dye all of them together. So arrow dye I got from Wilco. I get it from home base. Arrow dye is arrow dye. It's going to be a five minute strong super glue bonding and the heads aren't going to come off. So it doesn't really matter. You don't need a standard or like a special build. I use any arrow dye. Mix it up. Put it on the shaft, put it on the head, twist it on, leave it to dry for five minutes. Really important if you haven't done a shaft and you're doing the decals later, if the shaft's already got the decals, which is your Project X sticker here, align it there and then because no doubt all of these shafts, and again, it was another sign that these clubs weren't built by a professional, all the decals were like twisted, like some were facing downwards, some were on the side, some were on the back. You need to make sure that they're aligned properly as the glue's setting. Don't do the grip. Grip's the last thing you do because again, you wanna make sure the lengths are perfect and making sure that all the decals are then spine, um, down the bottom of the spine, for example, or whatever preference, but normally they're at the back of the shaft. So all heads are now glued on with the ferrules on the shafts. 
now to combat the length situation. So as we know, the pitching wedge, the 9-iron, 8-iron are all same length. The 9-iron is actually correct, and I actually measured at the start of this whole video the 7-iron against a standard length 7-iron. That's how I know that it's standard length. Therefore, I know the 9-iron is actually correct, and the pitching wedge and the 8-iron aren't. Now, I don't know if this was on purpose, I don't know why you'd potentially want your pitching wedge, your 9 iron, and your 8 iron the same length, and then the rest of the set not. Or maybe you'd want all of them at a pitching wedge level to give yourself that kind of control. It didn't make a lot of sense. We have to lengthen the 8 iron. I got an old shaft, it really doesn't matter what shaft. I only had to raise it up a quarter of an inch, if that. But it makes a massive difference to the overall appeal of the golf clubs. Any old shaft, I found an old pitching wedge, I cut it to the point that I could slide it down the shaft. I got it to a point where it obviously hit one of the ridges or one of the steps in the shaft and it was going to be a pretty strong bond. I then sharpied it to make sure that I wanted that quarter inch so it then matches between the 7 iron and the 9 iron and then I cut it and then it leaves you this inch gap or inch filler of a steel shaft and because it's at the top end of the golf club and because I'm going to aerodite it and then regrip it and then put tape around it so it's the same width as the overall shaft it's not going to affect performance and it's not going to affect, it's not going to move at all. That thing is in there solid. The heads are all glued in with the ferrules nice and tightly around them. So that part of the process is good. We've actually cut and lengthened our shafts and now they're all matching, which is brilliant. Grips need to go on. Very simple, white spirit or grip solution. White spirit, if you're only planning on doing one, I highly recommend using gloves, mainly because I've used white spirit for a good portion of my life in pro shops and never wore gloves and they destroyed my hands. So I'd highly recommend using uh, either grip solution because again, it's just cheap, cost effective and if you can wait and you're planning on doing a lot of them, get grip solution. White spirit can work and is actually really easy. That's probably why most people do it because it's very unlikely it's gonna stick down the shaft. You want to use excessive amount of solution, whatever you do. Measure up from the grip to the top. So the two little lines, as you can see on the grip here, for example, you measure that at the top of the, that's where the club is basically gonna finish. You've got that butt end at the top there. Double-sided tape down the side of it, wrap it, put a load of solution in the grip, shake it about, pour it down the shaft, slide the grip on, and you want to align the logo of the Golf Pride here with this front edge. So the last little surprise this set through me was the forearm shaft was bent. You can see in the video here how the kink in it halfway up it. I don't know how it happened. I don't think it was myself. I'm pretty sure this is how the shaft came. But it's just one of those. If this was to happen to you guys and they didn't put in the item description, just ask for your money back. However, at this point, I'm just going to take it on the chin and just sell the set of the five to pitch and wedge and get this reshafted at some point. Lastly, I cleaned them all up because a lot of these had like glue and everything else coming out of them from the old build and all I used was this magic sponge a lot of you guys ask which one I really don't think it matters I get these off Amazon they come next day I think it's a fiver for 12 of them they just make everything look better they take t-marks off drivers they clear all the rust off the back of these as well I kind of could get pretty much all of them. You'll see in the video that actually the condition of these are a lot better. The wear marks are still there, but there's no rust on them whatsoever. And all I used was this, warm water and that. It adds so much value to a lot of clubs. The amount of clubs that I've bought and doubled their price purely by cleaning the dirt out of them, putting that over them, all of a sudden it's gleaming, it's shiny, you take a picture out in the daylight, there you go, you've just made yourself 40, 50 pounds in terms of value, um, and your club looks in really good condition. Nothing worked ever better than that. And it's probably the only refurb that I do to add value to clubs. Everything else, the whole process you just saw, took me probably about, from start to finish, five hours. Therefore, Five hours, if I was to go and teach or even work as my homie's delivery driver, minimum delivery driver, I'm making 20 pounds an hour. Teaching, I'm making 45 pounds an hour. I haven't added 200 pounds worth of value to this entire set. But for a lot of you guys that were on a project before you can get on the golf course, that is how I build a club and that's how I build a golf club at home with pretty minimum tools. Again, steel, you can do this with, don't do it with graphite. So guys, there you have it. P770s, done, finished, built, bit of hard work, 
when I bought these, I thought I got an absolute steal. And to be honest, I did. I did get a really good set of golf clubs. And to be honest, now I'm thinking of my 2021 bag. It's probably something that I head design that I'll probably be looking for as well. Guys, thank you ever so much for watching this video. Leave it a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you are new. Catch you guys later.